Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the International Black Summit interview podcast. As many of you know, the International Black Summit is an organization that was created in 1991. And the purpose of the International Black Summit is to provide an opportunity for participants to bring into being their vision for the Black community and the world. And the purpose of this interview podcast is for us to interview guests, uh, current and past facilitators and participants of the International Black Summit to find out how the International Black Summit has affected or changed their life and how they use the tools and distinctions of the summit in their work, their lives, their families, their communities. So um, before we introduce our guest for this evening, our guest for this evening is Dawn Armstrong. But before we introduce her, Glenn's going to share the International Black Summit Declaration. The Declaration of the International Black Summit. We declare ourselves, our community, and all communities whole and complete. There is nothing to do except be. We assert that we are responsible for generating community as possibility and distinction. We listen for and grant being to the possibility and creation of unpredictable results. Our conversation of, about, and for those of African descent is one of power, self-generation, abundance, responsibility, unity and integrity with the possibility of being. We stand for the expression of our spirituality, ending the murders of our men, women, and children, building economies responsible for funding our community, maintaining wellness of being in our bodies, providing human services, establishing nurturing relationships, altering the conversation of who we are in the media, empowering our youth. We declare that our community manifest itself in the world as a contribution in the transformation of the universe. Atlanta, Georgia, October 7th, 1991. Back to you, Jackie Grace. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, thank you. So that really just sets the foundation for us as we go into this interview with Don Armstrong. Um, many of you have been following us when, since we started these interviews back in April of 2022. Uh, and now we are in March of 2023. So we are rounding out and completing a 12-month cycle. And our 12th guest this evening with us is Dawn Armstrong, a fellow Canadian and, and an inspiring human being. Uh, I'm just going to read Dawn's bio here, and then we'll have her join us in our virtual studio. So let me read this really interesting background for Dawn. Dawn Armstrong is a communication and learning consultant committed to the development of people who are seen, heard, and valued for the gifts they bring to the world. She has over 20 years of consulting and leadership experience, including collaborating with private, public, and nonprofit organizations in North America and the Caribbean. She has a passion for God, dancing, music, and the creation of multimedia learning opportunities, which bring people together to foster the development of a more sustainable and loving world. Dawn has a Master of Library and Information Science and a Master's of Theological Studies. She has been a facilitator with the International Black Summit for more than 20 years. She describes herself as BOLD, B-O-L-D, which she confidently uses as an acronym for a Black older lady with disabilities. This newfound boldness and authenticity began to emerge 16 years ago after she had a paralyzing stroke. It was then that her eyes, ears, and spirit were truly opened and she began to see the many gifts that she brings to the world. One such gift is A Path to Success, which is a faith-based multimedia initiative that provides tools 
and guidance to assist people of African descent in their quest to be seen, heard, and loved for who they truly are and prosper as a result. This initiative is delivered virtually through Bold Mastermind, where global participants harmoniously blend their minds to bring into being their personal and collective goals. Dawn is currently finishing and finalizing her book, A Path to Success, and plans to launch it with Bold Mastermind later this year. So we just want to welcome Dawn. So uh, if we can have um, Dawn uh, enabled to turn on her. Start your video. Her video. There she is. Okay, there you are, Dawn. Great to see you. Great to be here. Thank you guys so much for this invitation. Welcome, welcome. Very excited to have you. You know, um, one of the things we do, this is just a, a conversation. We will ask uh, ask questions, Don, um, primarily just asking you about how you were introduced to the summit, your engagement with the summit, et cetera. But, uh, but feel free as we engage in this conversation to just let it go where it goes, right? Spirit's going to lead this conversation. Life energy is going to lead this conversation. It'll go how it goes. Exactly. So first I wanted to ask you about um, how you first found out about the International Black Summit. Like who first introduced you? What was your first exposure or your first event? You know, like that. Peter Trevor Wilson introduced me. I, I think I was working with him at the time and he wanted to tell us about this amazing group that he was he was working with. So he brought us all and gave us the uh, introduction. I'm not even sure if you were, you were there, Jackie. He gave us this introduction. But I think what really um, amazed me and got me hooked was a prerequisite. Um, Kat was one of the leaders of that that we had in Toronto. And I, before they even finished, I was I was already in Memphis, so that that was just so powerful. I remember that event. You know, for for people who aren't yet familiar with the International Black Summit or haven't attended any of our events, events. One of the things that the International Black Summit does is have an annual event, and back in twenty twenty, back in two thousand two, so twenty years, almost twenty one years ago, it was held in Toronto. And so there were a number of events around that. Um, and I believe after Toronto was Memphis, correct? I think Memphis was before Toronto. Oh, it was before because Toronto. Because I, I got so hooked after, you know, even Memphis, I came back. And the six months after that, I was really on a cloud and I saw myself doing things that amazed me. I was so clear. I even got... Um, a contract with a bunch of other consultants it was like ha, a quarter million dollars. I mean, like I was so clear. Um, and that was also um, when I enfolded um, about nine people, brought them all into the summit. I was so, I was so hooked by what, what the summit was giving me. I wanted everybody to have it. So uh, Memphis was your first event? Memphis, Memphis was my first. So Dawn, tell us a little bit about what it what it is that you actually got for yourself. So I heard some clarity. I heard um, some other things. Can you be a little bit more specific in what what you actually received? Ownership. That was the distinction that I got there, um, because I felt I was owning all these things that really they weren't they weren't mine. They weren't mine to own, and 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 saw that I had to own me and that set, that was so so something I, I actually needed to own and embrace me and it enabled me to relate people in a totally different way without always taking on <laughs> okay their okay. stuff you know mm -hmm. I remember around that time that we were engaging in a lot of conversations around ownership and creation and community in and around that kind of 
1999 to 2004, 2005, each year um, the organization would in, engage in an inquiry for the year. And that inquiry would change each year. The question for that inquiry would change each year. And in and around that time, I'd have to look it up. I don't remember which year, but I remember one of those years it was, who am I being as the creator of my life and community? Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember also, so that was one year we really delved into that question, who am I being as the creator of my life and community? And another year we engaged in the question, what is available in consciously owning all that I create? Yep. What's available in consciously owning all that I create? That was the inquiry another year in and around that time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting that you talk about the ownership. Mm -hmm. and having uh, that being part of what you got at that, that time. Yeah, but that's the people. Um, that was so important to me. Here was a group of people that were me, that were like me. And I was no longer felt kind of odd in my thinking or on the outside and people who were inquiring, who were seeking. And so beyond the distinctions, that's this group of people that, that attracted. So how did you get to that first Memphis event? Did you go by yourself? Did you go with friends? Did you drive? Did you fly? Like, what was that like for you? Um, I cannot really specifically remember, but I'm pretty sure we got this through by flying. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> it only makes sense. Yeah, a whole I bunch of us you. Toronto people. I think uh, that may have been the first one for Jackie to Ottawa also, a whole bunch of Toronto people went down. I believe Corita went down, a bunch of us went down. So, and it was, yeah, Amazing. It was good. My father went to that one, actually. I think that was, my father has been to two of the annual events for the organization and he did attend the Memphis one and the one in Brazil. Hmm. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the 16 years ago life transforming event, because as you say, you don't remember everything about that, that Memphis because of this, this, this life changing event that happened for you, mm -hmm. and how so much is growing, uh, is coming up for you now in terms of being a bold woman, B-O-L-D, <laughs> a bold woman and everything that you're creating and the book that you're writing about that. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. It's not an easy thing to talk about um, briefly, but I will make make do my best <laughs> um, because at Take the your time, time, just before I had the stroke, I was having some problems in the summit, actually. And we know that when we're bumping up against stuff, something is going on in us, and I. I kind of separating myself from everyone. And in my own world, um, I, I actually, I was doing great in my job. I was working at a major bank in Toronto. And then they brought in another manager um, who decided things had to be done her way. Now, I know this is my mind talking. So, um, and my, I, I couldn't do things her way. And there was a conflict and a really thinking that things had to be done a certain way, my way. <laughs> and all of that conflict um, going on and, and really not liking this person um, for the things she did, she said, um, I, have to, I have a real resentment in me not only for that person, for people in the summit who, who were my, among my closest friends at the time. And interestingly enough, after this person who came from the UK um, came, um, I found myself after being kind of dubbed this kind of one of the stars of the organizations, I found myself walked to the door, surprisingly, um, uh, shocked because in a way, I thought, well, they're not going to let me go. And nobody knows what I know. No one can do what I can do. 
Well, uh, they did. They walked me, and, and I'm I'm in my forties, so you start to think, well, no, I don't want to start over again. And when that happened to me, and I have to bring up the summit because the tools are there, but I didn't use them. I didn't clear. I just sure. let that stuff seep inside of me. Um, I I cried for two, three seconds, then I had to be that superwoman that I liked, liked to be. Um, and just try and figure out what do I do next, but I couldn't figure out what I do do next. And interesting enough, two weeks after that happened, I had a stroke. And the interesting thing about the stroke was, I remember when I was sitting in the hospital, the doctor came to me and said, um, not, my, mind you, my mind was not all there. Um, so I'm just saying what I remember. He said to me, I have good news and bad news. Um, the good news is you're perfectly healthy, which is a funny thing to say to someone who just had a, a stroke and the pa paralyzed on the right side. And the bad news, since, is, since we don't know what caused your stroke, we have no idea what to tell you to do to prevent it. Wow. And so, you know, I had to the whole, so I knew somehow that my mind, my spirit, all of that was, was key to, to overcoming that. And then, then uh, one part that I especially like to tell um, when I talk about this is that even after that, on my birthday, soon after I had the stroke, I was in a rehab facility and um, I had a seizure. I had, so I had to go back into emergency. And I came back and um, I say this so many times, I was always saying, I said to God, who am I? I'm no longer the superstar kind of sort of that I thought I could be. I'm not climbing anymore. Who am I, God? I'm obviously not who I thought was. And that was when I heard loudly, you are love. And that was the beginning of the shift. For And that was what I think beginning of what saved me. And, and, and another time, once I got out of the hospital and still, love's not gonna save me, what am I gonna do? You know, I have to deal with all these other people. And I actually heard, and quieter this time, um, believe. It mm. may take a long time, but and you may not come all the way back, but you will come back. Believe. But so mm. that that's really when everything started, and believing, and having people like the summit, and those in summit body surround me and help me with this very long journey and beneficial journey. So that would have been, you know, 16 years ago would have been 2007. So that would have been about six years after your first summit event. Mm -hmm. So in, in that first six years leading up to that, um, that event, had you how many um how many uh summit events had you attended during that period of time leading up to it i believe that I, I just kept on since the first one i just kept on attending okay yeah okay so and were you a, part, a member of the facilitator body at that time but, yep right right from um toronto okay 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 so it's interesting looking at um the 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 time that you spent in the summit space before that and then going through those experiences hearing the messaging that you were hearing um and having both access to the summit community and access to the summit tools and distinctions as part of the support so when you look at that, were there, were there any specific summit distinctions that became favorites 
or that you tended to look to at all? Well, I always looked to clearing Clearing, um, yeah. because whenever something is in me that I can't let go of, it reminds me of the stroke. You got to get that stuff out. You, you have to get to the root of whatever it is that is bugging you. You know there is no out there. It's all in you. And mm -hmm. so I had to yeah. find the summit person to clear with because other people tend to tell you what they think you want to hear. But what I loved, loved and still love about um, my summit family is that they tell you like it is and really help you to look and see. And I need that because if I don't clear, um, I headaches, it's, it's crazy, all of that. So I'm not getting another straight slope. So, so clearing is one of my favorite and necessary tools. I, you know, I, I, I love the reference to that. You know, I remember when I first started using this distinction clearing regularly in my life early after, you know, the first couple of years after joining the facilitator body. And I remember having the thought at the time, how do people go through life without this? <laughs> you know, like, how do people go through life without, you know, life gives us stuff and it builds up and it builds up and we need to clear it. You know, in the same way that we need to clear out our closets every now and again, we need to clear out the garage or the attic every now and again, we need to clear out our emotions, we need to clear out our mental uh, blocks, we need to clear out like the stuff that builds up uh, inside of us mentally, emotionally, spiritually, we need to clear. So, um, so I just find it so interesting that you were pointing to that one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Dawn, you also mentioned um, no out there. So there's an aspect of, of, of you certainly being retrospective or introspectively looking at um, wh where you are, what you're bumping up against, and so forth. And, and you talked about the facilitated body as a support for that. Um, were there any other distinctions that 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 were that uh, bounced out at you? And while you're thinking about that, let me let the listeners know. So distinctions are sounds like words that we use inside of the International Black Summit, but they actually have a particular meaning, a particular context. And so um, Dawn talked about clearing. Um, we use it as a verb, as an adjective, as a way of clearing the field or clearing our head or clearing the space so that we can listen and hear what life, God, spirit has. And, and, and inside of Dawn's example, she heard um, believe. And so that was something that came to her inside of her clearing. So Dawn, were there any other distinctions that that um, that you were able to to use uh, in your recovery. Recognition, a similar recognition of trigger. Um, mm -hmm. You know, trigger. Okay. Yeah, because they're, they're, especially in family, they can pee you off, <laughs> and sometimes I can. Again, my emotions are very important because they actually they affect my thinking. And if I get triggered, anxiety, if I get really seriously triggered, you don't want to see me. I'm like a crazy person. So I can stop myself by saying, okay, Don, you're looking over there. What is it in you? What is it in you that's being triggered that that's not being attended to? And so once I do that, doesn't mean I'm not gonna get crazy triggered. It means that I, I can move from there. I don't stay there. So that that is a, a big one for me too. I, I think I think when I when I look, I think for a lot of us, um, that trigger uh, capacity uh, occurs and it and 
for me, when, when I look at it for myself, I am on automatic pilot. I, I'm not even, I don't even know myself inside of that because I'm reactive and I, and I am, and I'm not rational. <laughs> and, and so, um, so I look to avoid that for myself and, and, and as other people use it, how they use it. Now, there's something that we use with it also, which is called noticing. So inside of the trigger, so one of the things that Dawn pointed to just now was that, that she noticed that she was triggered. Like she recognized herself going down that tunnel or, or about to go down that tunnel. And so sometimes noticing, we want to be able to notice where we are in the process. Uh, you know, am I going there? I, I, I'm, I'm feeling the trigger coming on or I'm getting a little testy and I notice it and, and I'm able to then stop the action so that that automatic pilot is not right there playing its game on me. I actually have some control on myself. So noticing allows me to look outside as if I'm outside of myself what, looking at the what action that I'm taking or in this case what's triggering me like 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 Dawn said well what it, it's not over here with me it it is over here with me but but it's it's being sounded by over there and I and I want to blame over there but the truth is it really is over here with me so what is it in me that it has me be annoyed, has me be upset, has me be agitated, such that I can that I stop communicating, that I'm because I'm no longer engaged in the conversation at that point when I'm triggered. I am somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, Don, I have known you a, a long time. Thank you for that, Glenn. I have known you a long time, and uh, you know, we're both Torontonians uh, here in Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, part of the international aspect of the International Black Summit. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm just present to the expansion of your power. Like, as you talked about um, act using trigger, and you talked about how you use it, um, and going down that path of being triggered, and it just was, it's, it just landed with me with such power. Like the distinction between having life push you around versus you standing, looking at what the source of the trigger is, taking ownership and responsibility and being able to move and, and take life on whichever way it's coming at you. Like just, just such a grounded center of power in how you, in how you describe that. So I'm just curious, do you have a sense of your own expansion of power over this 16 year journey? I have, it's, that's, a, that's a big uh, question. Um, yes, for sure. And, and the main thing is that um, I have to use a, a, a biblical reference. I think it was second Corinthians 12, nine um the whole idea of my grace is enough for you um because my power is perfected in weakness um this real sense is that i i am i am weak but i am strengthened by source um that i should listen as we do listen learn to listen authentically listen in the summit so I can hear what source is saying, what source is saying through our alignment, all of that. And that has become so, so powerful for me, learning that I am not this just one um, amazing, independent, do everything, but that when I become dependent on this body, not interdependent on this body, and I listen and I, all of that, then something powerful happened. Just the other day, I had a, I had a huge clearing with um, a person, a facilitator in the summer, and she said to me, 
well, Don, um, sometimes I hear you and you just sound, you just sound, um, what was the sentence he said? Pissed off and argumentative. And um, the good thing about that, there was a point in my life where I'd be saying, who is she? If she can't say that to me, I would have been, yeah, pissed off that she said that. But I was able to just hear it. I know the person who is speaking to me. And I know the love that is within her. And if I am love, then look at what that is. I know that she's also speaking about what's going on out there. But I had to look to see if I noticed anything, if all of that in me. And it was an amazing um, thing for me to see, like who I was being, that, that I really was out of alignment with the group because I tend to do things on the outside sometimes because I'm sure they're not gonna let me do things my way. I'm kind of different. I'm this, I'm that. And, and, the, and that's not so, you know, I can bring it into the, the alignment, you know, where we all work together and see what spirit is saying to all, to all of us. And so that's where I rest actually. That's where I am most of the time. I cannot say I'm there all the time, but that's where I am most of the time, hearing that and um, hearing that amazing contribution from other people who help me see what I sometimes cannot see. And I'm, I'm able to listen to them now because I understand who I am and the power of my weakness. That's so great. That's so great. And you also referred to another summit tool in their authentic listening, you know, which is another very significant aspect of the International Black Summit facilitator body and the tools, authentic listening, which is a particular, a particular, you know, kind of listening, a particular depth of listening, you know, um, and so, and powerful, a powerful tool as well. So um, for me, I, I, I kind of want to go in a little different direction um, in terms of just event-wise. Have you had a favorite summit event that you've attended? And why was it your favorite? Well, I, I have to say my, the, my first one was my favorite. Because it was so groundbreaking for me, like I never imagined such a thing could happen. Um, and Toronto was also a favor because I just brought all my peeps in there, and it was so cool. And it was also the the first year that Shani came along, and so I was able to bring her into space, the space, and had seen um, Shani, your his, daughter. Yeah. And you know, sometimes in Canada here, we don't really know, uh, uh, I say, I, um, I don't really know how black people can be. And um, in a space, bringing my daughter in that space and everybody um, taking her as if they were hers and bringing her to summits after that, oh, I've loved it. That has been special. So we want to let you all know, though, those of you who are listening, we have uh, three summits that are going on simultaneously at the annual event. So we have the uh, adult, of course, 18 and over. We have the young adult that starts at 18 and goes to 35. And then we have the uh, young young people. The youth, yeah. The youth, the youth summit, which is uh, from 8 to 17. And so we have... They're all occurring at the same location in different rooms um, so that the people can really be with their peers and really experience the things of life that they're going through together as a subgroup inside of the context of, the, of love and um, empowerment and uh, being with your Blackness 
around other people that are sharing those same uh, standards and insights and uh, just a lot of excitement. So, so bringing your daughter was a lot of fun, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it's consistent with the family environment that we create inside of the structure called International Black Summit. And we have the annual event. Um, Dawn talked about a prerequisite. That's a standalone course that we do, um, usually to kind of orientate people inside of how do we operate. But it also is, um, again, as I said, a standalone, can be a standalone a program that we can bring to different communities to allow people to really engage and to use the the distinctions, the tools that we've been talking about to really work together and and to work on projects locally. So it's a real opportunity to, you know, Dawn talked about some of the people that she worked with in Toronto and and having them come out so that they can share that conversation and then bring it back into their community in Toronto. So very- uh, Yeah, popular. and if I, I may add, um, Glenn, I've got to mention this. Um, when we went to Jamaica and uh, we went to um, Top Hill and did oh, yes. um, a youth summit and it was just so amazing. Seeing what those... year was that, Don? Because you were the spearhead. You were the, the person who, were, who was cause, the cause of that happening. So what year was know. that? What year was that, Glenn? <laughs> uh, let me go take a quick look and I'll tell well, you. Well, the only thing I know is that it was pre-stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it was in 2005. 2005. Because we're, we're in Miami, Florida, Chicago, and Top Hill. Yeah. Oh, yes. I remember that. Yeah. So, Don, that, that for me takes, you, it takes me into looking at your connection with youth and your connection with youth in different parts of the world. You know, um, Glenn just mentioned that we do have um, youth events in addition to adult events. Mm -hmm. And you have been involved in a number of the youth events, both in the International Black Summit and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. so, so share with us a little bit about your passion for youth um, and uh, your involvement with youth as it relates to the summit. Mm -hmm. Well, at first, my really more young adult. Um, at first, I guess my passion grew after my nephew was killed, um, was shot. And I, my, I kept on thinking, you know, I just want to connect. I didn't connect with him. I just need to connect and, and see what I do, I can do. So um, so I've been exploring that with the young adult team, and we're looking at even seeing if we can get something going in Jamaica, Nigeria, Nigeria, and Ghana. And for me, um, I've been, you know, kind of helping out with a school in Top Hill, which is a school I went to as a little girl. Um, oh really? That you yeah, are in Top Hill. That's my community. Everybody in that community practically is related to me, in some way, <laughs> shape, or form. You know, yes. my great, 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 whatever grandparents are buried up there. So it's like, you know, there's that that root. And so for me, giving back to those, um, I say, little people, those awesome little people, and seeing their growth, um, which with um, I'm even doing now is is an amazing opportunity. So 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 back up. Tell them a little bit about the first top hill and then let them know about the top hill that's happening now. Because okay. you were the person that were the focal point. It would not have happened without you. Um we had Oren and Rosemary and myself um in Top Hill making that happen. Uh, so in 2005 and, and, yeah. and jake and jake and jake that's right jake yes 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 yeah yes, of course, you yeah. know it's like that was just me standing when we were all coming we, to deciding where we would have the next summit and i just stood that i wanted it to be top hill jamaica and then um i think you guys stood with me i said that you would go 
And that's how that came about. And it was an amazing event. Not only did we have the summit and having these youth come out in a way I hadn't seen them before. Um, I had them saying things to me. One young lady um, said to me, um, I asked her, what did you learn? She said, I learned that I can be anything I want to be. Um, and I said, yeah, but you knew that before. And she said, no, I didn't. Um, you know, and and even the, the, the little boy who kept, kept on going home to his mother and talking about what self-determination and <laughs> Uh, it was it was an amazing and I remember us being one uh, with them and really helping with the school and just celebrating and that's something I love about uh, the summit, um, especially those of the past music and dancing and just celebrating our celebration of ourselves. It was amazing so and this now what we're looking at um, these young kids have grown up. So now it's a different set of youth um, that we're looking at. And uh, the youth sees to get, um, but I'd also like to see some young young adults so looking to see, get involved in the school in that way. You know, it's well, such... I, well, I, I just, I just got to give a plug for, for Top Hill, St. Catherine in Jamaica. <laughs> Beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. You're in the mountains. You're looking down into the valleys. It's beautiful. In the mornings, we went down and bathed ourselves in the fresh, flowing river. Oh, my goodness. Had mangoes and stuff. Anyway. <laughs> Jamaica so you can you can tell you can tell we had we had a wonderful time and the kids led us and we had like a group of children that would go with us down to bathe and it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Jamaica is a beautiful beautiful place. All of Jamaica. Yes. Yes. Uh, all of my people my people aren't from Top Hill but <laughs> but all of Jamaica is beautiful. Yes. But it's important to note that I didn't have that experience until I did it with the summit. I I didn't bring, we bought, I think, uh, a marching band that they've never seen on these little narrow streets. Yes. That didn't happen. That didn't come out of me until I was a part of the summit. So that, uh, you know, is important to say. We also, we also took a trip to uh, the Department of Tourism and and uh, uh, because Top Hill wanted to look at eco tourism uh, as a community, and <laughs> and the first thing that the the uh, the Jamaican uh, uh, department that we were uh, meeting with the tourism department is like, well, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> we're just here to support this community, and they were like, they gave us that look like. For real, you came all the way from America to just have this conversation to support them, and you don't want anything. And and they were just they, they, they it, it took them a little bit. They were taken a little aback by it. Um, but we had the same conversation in Brazil when we were in Brazil. You know, then then believe that we were just there to support black empowerment. So anyway. But Top Hill was grand, I must say. Back to you, Grace. <laughs> well, I'm just, I, I, I mean, back to, to Dawn. <laughs> um, you know, I just really appreciate you talking about the feedback from these young people who attended the event. Like as somebody who is personally, I'm immersed in the summit conversation, the kind of uh, words uh, that we use as distinctions that give us access to something, give us access to an, a, an ability to be and live life from a place of ease and power and flow. And um, and so to hear the young people you know, going home, talking to his mother about self-determination, <laughs> you know, and being clear that they can stand for themselves becoming whatever it is that they are committed to. Like the, the, the access that it gives an individual and experiencing that 
in a context of community because the individual is not just you know what I mean like for me I'll just say this about the facilitator body and its design one of the things that I've personally found powerful about the design of the facilitator body trainings that I participated in back when I was a member of the body was that the trainings were in a circle. Everybody sat in a circle in the physical space and everybody talked almost like they had a talking stick. Like while you are talking, you have the talking stick and you have your space, you're given space to speak until you pass the talk, the talking a stick to the next person. And for me personally, although there's never, I've never experienced any conversation about this in the summit, but for me personally, it feels very African. Like I feel, it feels very African to me. It feels very natural to me. I feel very grounded and connected to my ancestors in just that style and way of being just and and there's just a space of love and acceptance even earlier in the conversation you talked about another facilitator um saying that you were being i can't remember but you were being xyz mm -hmm. but you were clear that they were coming from a space of love you know like the the summit in a conversation we will be straight with each other and we will you know speak our quote unquote stank naked truth another distinction but it's in a in a foundation of love at least that's been my experience for mm -hmm. me it's being always in a foundation of love which just makes a huge difference for me definitely so dawn I, i've got a question if what would you say to someone who was considering coming to the, to these uh summit annual event what would you what would you say to them the way I operate, I'm going to ask them some questions first to really see who they are. Um, I will, of course, tell them about my awesome experience, but I would base what I tell them on what they're saying. Um, and, you know, another thing, probably I would tell them in a way, the summit helped save my life because even after the whole stroke thing, I didn't even, I don't know how many of you knew that, but I went partially blind in one eye um, for a while. Um, so I went through like four operations and I really had a difficult time at that whole thing when I tried to, when I drew my, my theology and I said I was quick because I, sh I was sure I couldn't do it. But then really putting all that aside and, and believing and, and then coming out with like amazing performance. A lot of that is because I had people in my corner. Um, and, and the summit is that I would tell them that story, you know, of really what the summit has done for me. Um, every minute I'm quitting but I can't seem to do that <laughs> because no, no, you just remind me, especially now I'm in a space of creating. I have now find my creativity. I cannot do a lot with my brain that I used to be able to do. And I often get confused at points and I cannot talk. And that's only because of the, the damage to my brain. Yet the love, that I have, that I get through the family. When I look at the distinctions, when everything is saying I'm this or I'm that, I hear the distinction. And not so much the distinction, the, the, the um, declaration, you're whole and complete, you know? Yeah. And for people, that I think is something I would share, especially with them, especially if they're going through something. It's realizing just because you're going through this, just because you're going through that, and I can tell you stuff I've been through, um, but knowing that none of that is stopping you from being who you're here to be. In fact, it makes you stronger. You, you know, one of the things I, I would add to the conversation is that <clears throat> the summit is definitely a space where you 
interact with your vision. And so if you don't have a vision, um, that's something that you'll be working on when you get to the International Black Summit. Because the vision for me, let me speak for myself. So for me, having a vision um, helps me uh, kind of track where I want to go um, and uh, gives me a, a perspective and a, a series of action and commitment consistent with that. And my vision is health, wealth, and abundance available for all. And so that has me, that gives me purpose. And that purpose, I inside of that purpose, I take action. And so that action is consistent with my, my vision. Um, and so, um, Dawn, for you, what what would you say is your vision? And 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 visions change, and sometimes you complete on a vision, and then you create a new vision. Um, so, are you? What vision are you inside of? Um, bold peoples, okay. and black people, all the people, <laughs> ladies, and personally, persons with disabilities, being seen, heard, and valued for who they are. Mm -hmm. That yeah. that's the vision I'm inside of. That's clear, clear, and, and and you're clearly a demonstration of bold. <laughs> <laughs> and I and kids are a part of that. So that but more but with kids of African descent, yeah. And so, so speaking. I, sorry, it's just that I I get the sense that um the facility being in the summit body, the international back summit, it actually empowers you, um, energize you to not just see that vision, but to realize that vision. And I'm not sure I would be so much on my way to realizing my vision if it weren't for the summit and my summit peeps. Well, thank you for saying that, Don, because the purpose of the International Black Summit is to provide an opportunity for participants to bring into being their vision for the black community in the world, which means that people who participate, if, if, if they don't have a vision, that's the first question is designing the vision um, and then fo following up on that, fulfilling on that vision. So thank you for, for <laughs> being, being a demonstration of the summit uh, purpose um, in the process of being fulfilled. So, I wanted to ask a little bit about the two things. First, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your experience in the facilitator body. And then I wanted to ask you about the bold and the book. Yes. So first the facilitator body. So you've been in the facilitator body now for over 20 years. And we asked you earlier about inviting people to attend one of our events, not just the annual summit event, but some of the other events that can happen at any point throughout the year. Um, but if someone was already eligible to join the facilitator body, why, why would you suggest that they might consider that? Again, um, I'm a processor, so these uh, questions are, are not necessarily easy for me because I will sit and I'll question for two, two, two days before I answer it. Um, but, but, but now, um, yeah, I, I, and, and the way I get my mind working, I really have to get them talking to see how, who they are, what they want, and whether or not um, they can be a contribution. I mean, we all can be a contribution, um, but yeah, I, I need to hear people, authentically listen to people before I can recommend anything. And I got you. So it would be very, very tailored to each specific person, mm -hmm. your response. But, I get yeah, that, that you can. Yeah, and if, if, if I can, if I'm talking now to a group, um, when you're in the facilitator body and what has really benefited me is that this work has gone on over years. Like we don't just overcome stuff, clear away to stuff, achieve stuff, and oh, we're perfect now. Stuff keeps coming up. And in the facilitator body, we get to work on that, clear ourselves so that we can be a clearing for other people, each summit. 
So we're not only given to others, wherever we go all over the world, we are given to ourselves. And for me, that given has been, you know, it's, it's, I've even noticed that I'm not, sort of creativity, I really kind of didn't notice that before. And I practice a lot of that through the summit. Oh, God, I got it. So, yeah, I see that part of it is the opportunity to practice, the opportunity to ongoingly clear, the opportunity to ongoingly engage in ways that are supporting you and in, in, in what you're committed to creating mm -hmm. or in who you're committed to being. And the opportunity to realize um, your vision, um, realizing my vision is um, is also done um, with the support of, of people, you know, in the facilitator body, you know, of the energy that it gives me. Yeah. So then let's shift to bold and book. <laughs> so bold, right? Black older lady with disabilities. I guess I'm just mm -hmm. a bowl, black older lady. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know why that came about? Um, I, I've worked in diversity training for a while. And then and I looked and I said, you know, uh, kind of looking at myself, here I am. Uh, uh, I've been, I'm in four of the categories they call disadvantaged. I'm black, I'm older, I'm a woman, lady, and I have disability. And I realized, but they really are, they're all gifts to me. They're not, and I, and I, and I refuse to fall into the trap of saying that they're not. They're, they're gift, even in my disability, um, I have to walk with a cane, like I, I mean, especially outside, I have to use a mobility um, vehicle. But I've met so many amazing people uh, that I can listen to. And because I'm, I'm unable to do some things, I discover other things. So I don't in any way, I, I, I tell everybody and people look at me and say, yeah, really? I say, it's all been a gift to me. You know? And I- I, I can hear that. Yeah. 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 You know, I, 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 I'll say if anyone had told me that I was going to enjoy my 50s as much as I do, <laughs> right, I would have thought they were lying, right? Like, mm -hmm. so, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying my 50s. <laughs> and, and you have to enjoy where you are, um, yes. wherever you are, because actually yeah. my doctor, soon after I came out there, the hospital actually signed a form sent it to the government saying I would never walk or work again. Wow. And you know, if you don't start to see yourself as someone um more than that, and if your mind doesn't see it and you don't surround it yourself with people who also see it, then it will never will never happen. And, and that's what I think made a difference for me. So tell us about book. A book, a path yeah, to the success. Book. <laughs> yeah. You know, how did this one came come about also? Um, uh, I guess uh, around the, the time that I I released my first my memoir, which really just processed the whole stroke thing. I was looking at that at that, and I said, "Whoa!" I wrote some poems in there. And I said, "Whoa, that sounds like summit stuff." Um, but around the time that I, that I I did that, I found this book online, Napoleon Hill's um, Law of Success and Sixteen Lessons, and I read it. it was like about a thousand pages online. And I said, whoa, this is some stuff. This is this is what I've been through. And it's like a hundred years old. And so um, something said, call them, call them up and see if you can use some of their stuff. You know, because 
it's so old and a lot of it is amazing. You could work with that, you know, and my, my, I can twist things around. I love to work with it's all, oops, so sorry. No problem. I'm just waiting for that. Okay. That's all. Um, so I called up the Napoleon Hill foundation. I didn't call them after I sent them an email send them, and I know how to write nice emails and something just told me just to do it. So I got a, a letter back from the lawyer who wanted to know why I wanted it. I told him why I told him who I was and why I wanted to do it and said, sure, go ahead and use what you want uh, as long as it's, it's positive. And so I decided as someone with a training background, I wanted people to learn different things. So what I decided, I turned it into a path to success, which is an acronym. And so A, for example, stands for aiming for what you want, such as your vision. P, um, you kind of have to, is um, pleasing personality. You have to understand that one. But the other A is alliance. A lot of it, uh, um, and then, and then um, T just is, um, thinking, thinking accurately. And that it has a lot to do with distinguishing your mind. So all these things, um, I love to, I, I mean, I do in the book, but the point is that it's done with an acronym so that you can remember them all just by thinking of the acronym. Mm, okay. So, and, and so really it's kind of like the summit, but kind of done in my little way with some stories and using a lot, some stuff from Napoleon Hill. Nice. That's great. Napoleon Hill, he's the one who wrote Think and Grow Rich, right? Yes. 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 And the funny thing about Think and Grow Rich is I came out of um, the law of success and success lessons because Napoleon Hill did this huge research of, of all these people. And then a lot of stuff came out of that. So I have all that original kind of research stuff that I could use. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. But interestingly enough, I, I, I've been, I was supposed to finish it last year, but I couldn't, something was stopping me. Something was stopping me. But after that clearing that I had with the facilitator, I told you about, the beginning came to me. It all came to me. It's like my mind opened up. Yeah. And it came to the me. Power of clearing. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that book. Absolutely. A path to success. We might have to have you on after after the book is complete. That's right. <laughs> Be Bestsella, no, bestsella. <laughs> <laughs> Bring you on as a guest next season. So um, I don't know if you have any other questions, Glenn. I was going to present the two final questions to Go Dawn for, for her to consider. Yes. So Don, we have two, two um, big questions, we call them, that we sometimes ask. We don't always, but we sometimes ask. And uh, last, last month, we asked our guests to pick one of these two questions, and I'm going to do the same tonight. So to pick one of the two questions and answer the one that you'd like to answer. So the two questions are, the first, what are the biggest things you've learned about yourself as a result of the pandemic? That's the first question. The second question is, what are three wishes that you have for the world right now? So I'm just gonna repeat the two of them again, and you can pick one. Um, what are the biggest things you've learned about yourself as a result of the pandemic? Or what are three wishes that you have for the world right now? Uh, yeah, it would have to be the, the, the second because yeah, the first, not, I, I, yeah, I, I didn't learn anything I didn't already know. So the okay. second. So three <laughs> wishes, three wishes that you have for the world right now. Oh, the first one, love, 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 love. 
that um, if we could just learn to love each other and be there for each other and, you know, take care of each other. It's so hard to even go beyond that because that's all, you know, just without, you know, and, and related to that is um, relationships, nurturing relationships, you know, that, that, that's so important to me that, that even that we, again, as love, that we're not only there for each other, but we, we can call on each other, you know, as, and that's for, yeah, that's what the summit is for me. This is some, this is something I could write. Um, <laughs> so that's it. two, that's two. There's somebody in the background there. Um, that's two. Um, and so there's a third, what would you say your third wish is? Okay. Um, and if I answer, I know it's not my answer. I know it's my mind's answer in the moment because I have to answer because normally I have to be really, be really reflect. Um, so closeness to God, mm. understand that that we are nothing without source and that our mind will say this and that but when we get close you close to god when you allow ourselves to listen and feel god's presence and respond that and it makes all the difference in the world oh that's great so believe, number one believe. love Believe. <laughs> yep. Believe. <laughs> it's true. So number one was love. Number two was nurturing relationships. And this is obviously in no particular order. And then the foundational one, the third, um, closeness to source, to God. Beautiful. Thank you, Don. It's been such this a pleasure. Been, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this has this been is, fantastic. Yeah, just... Uh, I uh, love you, Dawn. Thank you for um, uh, being with us tonight. Um, thank you for all of what you do for Top Hill. Um, the last time and this go around, um, you know, it's just fantastic sharing the summit with your, with your family, the way you do. It's very powerful. And uh, it's a contribution to us as well as to them. So thank you for allowing the, the partnership. Mm -hmm. And I must say that, um, thank you for this. Uh, one reason I say this is because uh, another thing that I didn't tell you about when I was in hospital and I heard the second voice I heard um, said, share your story with the world. And mm -hmm. um, you, gave, you gave me that opportunity in another way, and I truly appreciate it, you know. We truly appreciate you sharing your story. You know, one of the things that I was going to thank you for is your commitment to sharing everything that you learn with everyone else. Like you are such an inherent and innate teacher that all of your knowledge is something you wish to give to the world all of your wisdom it's like it's it's like pouring out of you that this wisdom that you have you want everyone else to have it too and i thank you for that thank you Max. so don't go anywhere dawn because we are going to uh we're going to complete the uh uh the podcast recording but we do have a live audience uh, who's with us with the recording. And so after we stop the recording, those of you who are in the live audience, we're going to continue with a question and answer session with Don Armstrong. And if you are ever, if you're listening to this and you uh, ever want to be a part of our audience, you can connect with us through our website at blacksummit.org. That's blacksummit.org. Send us a message through, through there and we'll be able to get you access to being in our audience in the future. So thanks again, Dawn. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. And we'll talk to you Thank next you. time. Good night.